From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. And welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. The coronavirus's toll and the fight against the virus continue to dominate the news and our daily lives. Every day we see the numbers of confirmed cases and deaths rise around the world, around the country, and around Idaho. Every day, thousands of unemployed people wonder how they'll make ends meet and when they'll be able to go back to work. Every day we stay hunkered down in our homes as much as possible to try to slow the spread and flatten the curve. Every weekday, our teachers teach and our students learn from home. And every day we see exceptional acts of kindness and generosity throughout our communities as individuals, churches, civic groups, nonprofits, businesses and the government rally to help those who are hurting. We hope to hit on all of this today with my guest, Idaho Governor Brad Little. You know, much has changed in just a short time. Two weeks ago, he joined me on Viewpoint here in the studio, and now he joins us by vid video conferencing from his office. First of all, good morning, Governor Little. Morning, Doug. First, hey, how, how are you and your family doing? We're fine. We're, uh, uh, you know, it's, I think, and particularly uh, this Easter week, uh, time when families get together, we're missing that. Uh, I'm I'm not the biggest technology guy in the world, but I'm I'm getting better at FaceTime, and uh, we miss our grandchildren. Uh, but uh, compared to a lot of other people, uh, I've got it pretty easy. I'm I'm glad to hear that everybody's doing well in the little household. Um, Governor, your stay-at-home order runs through April 15th. That's this coming Wednesday. Will you extend it? Well, I think I've said this multiple in multiple venues. Uh, there will be something after the 15th. Uh, I've got a meeting uh, right away where we're looking at the data. We've built our own model. A lot of people quote the model that comes out of University of Washington. I've got two side by sides of that. Um, it is about flattening the curve is what we're about. And uh, we, we've seen the, uh, the very successful activity level, uh, infection level, uh, both in Blaine County, which is the first place we did it, and then all over Idaho as a result of the actions that we've taken place. But uh, this is not something you can switch on or switch off. It, it's It's gotta be metered. So we're, we're, we're looking at all the data. And of course, my goal, I've got two goals. One, I wanna keep everybody safe. B, I want the economy to return as fast as possible. But if I try and do the latter too fast, we'll have a second wave. And the second wave could even be worse than the first one, given the fact that we've got community spread in almost every corner of the state. When will you decide what it's going to be after the 15th? Well, obviously, um, on the 15th is when the order runs out. We'll, uh, before there, we'll have something. But we've got all this data coming in from uh, national, from local, from our health districts, from the hospitals, uh, from the testing labs. We're still, everybody's frustrated with the slow pace of testing. I was just reading an article just a minute ago about um, the, the slow pace of testing everywhere, and not only in the United States, but everywhere in the world. And that is not helpful when you're trying to make these uh, very complex decisions. As we've reported, some lawmakers and a Northern Idaho sheriff questioned your authority to issue the stay at home order, contending it violated the U.S. Constitution. But Attorney General Lawrence Wazin affirmed that Idaho code gives you the power during a declared state of emergency to restrict the movement of people and access to businesses. Uh, what's your response to to what the lawmakers and uh, the sheriff had said about the stay at home order that it went too far? Well, first, I did not take that this responsibility lightly. Uh, it, you know, when I declared the first emergency and the extreme emergency, uh, I did it predicated on law and the fact that in the 10th Amendment of the Constitution, it gives the states the powers uh, that aren't reserved to the federal government. And this is this is one of them. And uh, but I did not do it at all uh, uh, without thinking it was a heavy decision. Uh, but again, I have to protect the safety of the uh, people of the state of Idaho. And as almost all the other governors, um, there's there's a few governors that don't have what they call a stay at home, but they've got mm -hmm. a lot of guidance in place, which is equates to a stay at home. And we're seeing the benefits of it. What uh, do you we're see seeing the spread 
uh, the community spread go down, and that's uh, to our benefit. And the most important thing is that our sensitive populations, our elderly and our health compromised, uh, that we have the health care system to take care of them. This week, the State Board of Education uh, made the decision that kids will not go back to school this year unless the health districts deem it to be safe. And then even then, it will be up to each district. What do you think of the decision to extend that soft closure? Well, I, I consult with the, there's kind of an emergency team over at the State Board. It's got, it's got regional representation from all the school districts. And I hear from them, I talk to them. Uh, I think that, uh, that was a prudent decision. We still got areas in the state where there's there's hardly any known cases, uh, but what I hear back from the hospitals, from the doctors, from the health districts is because of the lack of testing, they probably have it. And mm -hmm. we don't want to accelerate it by uh, putting uh, all, any kind of gatherings in school would be one of those together and and causing a spike in the spread. And so I, I agree with them. But what, what's more exciting to me is the fact that uh, more and more school districts are doing uh, remote education, uh, online education. That's all to the benefit of our students. I don't want this to be a lost year. I want the educational progress that was made up till uh, 40 days ago to continue on and try and support the, the school district, the educators, the state board in every way we can. Um, you touched on it a little bit. Are you starting to see that we are flattening the curve here? Have we not hit the peak yet? I understand that's going to be the 16th was the projected date for our peak. Uh, yes, we have, uh, I mean, uh, very good indications of that. Uh, and, and that's happened from a lot of ways. People are staying home. But even when people go out, uh, when they go to the grocery store, uh, you know, the fact that now CDC recommends people wear a mask if they're around other people. Uh, those are all part of the solution, uh, what's taken place. But the incredible compliance by the people of Idaho to, to take the sacrifice to stay home, uh, to give up that social interaction that we all love, uh, to, to basically protect themselves, their families, and their communities um, is the reason that that uh, that curve is flattening and we believe we've gotten to the peak, but it would not take much for that to have a second wave and we don't want that to happen. Do you have any indication in your discussions with our public health experts that the coronavirus got here earlier than March? We've had some viewers telling us that they were sick with these same kind of coronavirus symptoms back in December or January. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, I think it was announced this morning. I'd heard I'd heard about it uh, a day or so ago. Uh, there's going to be a pretty significant research project taking place in Blaine County, which was the first place where we had community spread. And they're going to go out randomly and, and get a sample and take do antibody tests. And then we'll have a better factual background to determine who's had it, perhaps how long they've had it. Um, and, uh, and that'll be helpful in planning our activities going forward in, uh, in the hospitals do do the hospitals do our health care workers have the protective equipment that the their staffs need here in idaho well we believe so but again it depends upon what happens as long as people continue uh to to do the prudent thing they've been doing which is uh you know social distancing good hygiene as long as they continue to do that we believe that our, our, our personal protective equipment inventory is going to be adequate. We were very lucky in Idaho. We were one of the only states where we had a coordinated inventory where we knew what the, what the emergency uh, ambulance district did in a rural county, what we had at our big hospitals, what we had at our nursing homes, uh, so we can coordinate that and move it around. Uh, and we just got another shipment uh, from the federal stockpile but it's all dependent upon people having uh, that prudent behavior to where we don't spike uh, community spread and need more of it. Testing consumes a lot of PPE. Uh, if, if we were to try and test everybody in Idaho, uh, we have to have our healthcare workers protected and that would spike the consumption of our personal protective equipment. How about ventilators? Do we have enough of those as the situation stands? 
as the situation stands, uh, yes, Doug, we do. Uh, one of the things we have in Idaho that uh, uh, St. Luke's pioneered is what they call EICU, which is in essence one really, really good technician sits in a in a in a laboratory or in an office and monitors uh, all these uh, ventilators uh, to make sure that each patient has a customized flow of oxygen uh, and and care uh, for that individual patient because every individual has a different lung capacity. Mm -hmm. Every individual, if they're impacted and has to be on a ventilator, will need a different flow. And so ventilators are one thing, but having the experts to run them uh, is, and the pharmaceuticals they need to administer it is another thing. And so we're monitoring all of that. But we believe today, uh, the model from Washington says we have enough, uh, but again, uh, people's behavior is gonna determine uh, the critical level that we're going to need. You signed a proclamation making it easier for retired doctors and nurses to get relicensed and get back in the profession to help with the situation. We reported that about 400 nurses have done that. What do you think of the response? Uh, we're delighted. Uh, what we're doing in licensing, what we're doing on taking the, the cadre of nurses that are going through the nursing programs, the physician's assistant program, uh, getting them into the system early, making sure they're supervised, uh, but again, uh, our PPE equipment and our critical healthcare workers is dependent upon all of us doing our part to contain the spread, like having remote delivery of viewpoint. Exactly. Uh, Governor, we're going to take a quick time out and a commercial break, and then we'll be right back to continue the conversation. And with just about everything shut down, the coronavirus is having a major impact on businesses, workers, and the state budget. Next, I'll talk with the governor about the economic impact of the virus and what's being done to help those affected. How did Peterson Auto Group become the number one place to buy or service a car in Treasure Valley? Friendly service, a wide selection, and great prices. Peterson Auto Group, 10 brands, 5 locations, all in one spot. PetersonCars.com Hi students, this is Mrs. Elliott from Frontier Elementary. Miss you, hope you're doing great. This is Ann Webb from Owyhee Elementary in Nampa, and I miss you guys, and I am so proud of all the work you're doing. Hello, this is Mary Beth Matthews from Sherman Elementary. I want you to know that you are amazing and to remember to be kinder than necessary. Hey, this is Mr. Moore from Sherman Elementary School and I just wanted to say, Gators, that I miss you and I wish I could see your faces in person, but we're gonna get through this and we're gonna have a great time learning online. And remember, it's great to be a Gator. This is Corey Johnson from Sherman Elementary, and I just want to shout out to my students. I miss you, and stay strong. Hello, this is Amber McVeigh from Pepperidge Elementary, letting you know we've got this. We may not be together in our buildings, but we're still together as a community. This message brought to you by CapEd Credit Union, where membership supports education. Real steel. Find yours. Save $80 on the self-propelled RMA 460V battery-powered mower set and save an additional $40 when you take advantage of the double battery bundle. Battery power made by steel. Not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Always at a local steel dealer. Thank you for voting Peterson Auto Group the number one place to buy and service a car in Treasure Valley. Shop one of our 10 trusted brands at Peterson Auto Group. 10 brands, 5 locations, all in one spot. PetersonCars.com And welcome back to Viewpoint. Today we're focusing on the impacts of the coronavirus on many aspects of our lives. And we turn now to the economy. My guest is Idaho Governor Brad Little. Now, Governor, through the $2.2 trillion Federal CARES Act stimulus package, Idaho will get at least one and a quarter billion dollars. What will that money be used for and how's it being managed? Well, a lot of it is, is already uh, slated to go, some of it to hospitals, some of it to higher education, some of it to K-12. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different pots. Uh, we just had our first uh, meeting yesterday of our advisory committee, which is part of the agency, some people from education, uh, a couple independent uh, business, pe business people that uh, will, will kind of give us advice. All of it will be run through 
Transparent Idaho, which is a website and the system that our state controller Brandon Wolf has, uh, so that we are as efficient with that as possible and the public is confident with it. You know, for a guy from Emma, 1.2 billion sounds like quite a bit of money. And we want to make sure that A, we get it out to the people that need it as fast as possible, and B, that it's spent as efficiently as possible. How damaged is Idaho's economy? Well, of course, last month our, our revenue came in ahead of budget, uh, but uh, you know the, the unemployment numbers are, are staggering. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember all the work we went through when we had 100,000 people in Idaho out of work in 2009 and 10 when I was lieutenant governor and, and did a lot of work on economic development. For us to get from having one of the best economies in the whole world, particularly in the United States, to where we are today is just unbelievable to me. And and it's different in different places. You know, there's some services, obviously the delivery of online uh, goods, obviously grocery stores, but then on the other hand, uh, the hospitality industry has been has just been crushed. And my heart goes out to them uh, in a lot of ways. So it's just different for different sectors and different areas of the state. Our agricultural base um, is, you know, agricultural products are still in demand, but if you're a potato farmer and you grow potatoes for French fries and nobody can go to a, de uh, a restaurant and get a French fry, uh, that's not good either. So we have to look at every single part of the auto economy and what we can do to help restore it as fast as possible. I went through a drive through yesterday and, and got some French fries. So we are good, trying good, to help yeah. that cause. Um, but what's the state doing to help those who have lost their jobs? As you mentioned, the, the numbers are staggering. Well, we, our, our Department of Labor, the employment offices, uh, they were out busily trying to find a scarce worker for a business uh, 40 days ago. And today they're just being besieged by, by uh, uh, applications for unemployment. Uh, there's some pretty good programs from the federal government uh, that are gonna go out and supplement people that need uh, need income. And we're trying to get that done as fast and as efficiently as possible. So there's a lot of programs out there. Uh, I can't hardly keep track of all of them. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get a call or see somebody and they'll ask me about a program and I have to go back and look at my cheat sheet about uh, what program belongs to who we just want in Idaho that to be put out as efficiently as possible. Is most of the help then for individuals and for businesses coming through the CARES Act? A, a, a lot of it. And there's there's another program I was just talking to my our director of agriculture. There's some other money that's uh, available for agriculture. and We're trying to figure out how that works. Uh, there's there's programs out there for the healthcare uh, industry, for rural hospitals. That is to me, that's top of mind because the whole issue here is to lower that curve. And what we're trying to do is lower that curve to where it's not above our healthcare capacity. So uh, to keep citizens safe and to restore the economy, I have to make sure that my healthcare system, that we're not losing, that we're gaining on this healthcare system. It's obviously, as you mentioned, having a, a big impact on the state budget as well. And you issued an executive order to make $39 million available to help the state's response to coronavirus. What is that money for? Uh, well, because we know our income is going to come down. We know that sales tax receipts are going to come down. I tell people it takes a lot of toilet paper to make up for a car uh, from a sales tax standpoint. So our sales tax revenue is going to be down. Obviously, people are money, the personal uh, income taxes are going to be down. Corporate income taxes are going to be down. We are just planning uh, for less revenue, and we want to balance our expenditures with our revenue coming. So is that tapping the rainy day funds then? We, we have not tapped the rainy day funds. I made some transfers uh, to where we have some more money available, and some of that money will be uh, to get it out to hospitals and other areas as we wait for those federal dollars to come in. Uh, but that rainy day fund looks pretty good. I'm on a lot of calls, Doug, with other governors. And believe me, most states would love to have the financial position we have here in Idaho. Spe it's going to be a huge challenge, but it's going to be worse than a lot of other states. Speaking of that, you ordered 1% budget cuts at state agencies and departments. Are more likely, as you see this 
economic situation developing? Uh, well, oh, for next year, uh, we're already advising the uh, agencies as they look at uh, what takes place after the 1st of July, which is our fiscal year, about what they can do to save. Uh, the last thing you want to do in a crisis like this is raise taxes. Uh, but you also have to get out those necessary um, services to the people of the state of Idaho. They're more important now than they ever were before. And so we got to keep people safe. We got to keep our health care system up. But importantly, we want to be there to restore the economy as soon as we take our uh, restrictions off and get the economy going. And I want to do that as soon as possible. We're going to take one more break, Governor, and uh, come right back with a few more questions with the time we have left. So many people, organizations and businesses are stepping up to help fight the virus and those affected by it. For example, a Boise company known for making sporting equipment added medical gear to the products its workers are pumping out. I'll get the governor's take on the community response to the virus next. Right now, get a new Cat 246D3 skid steer for as little as $888 a month with zero down 60 month financing. That's right, only $888 a month. Stop by any Western States cat store to get your genuine cat skid steer at this price. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. So we're all taking what we hope is a short time to distance ourselves right now. You know what I'm talking about. But in this time of separation, still comes a time when we can get together. Maybe you pick up the telephone, call somebody you care about, a neighbor, somebody you just met. The sound of your voice could be just what they need right now. Right now, own a new Cat 262 D3 skid steer for as little as $9.54 a month with 0% down 60-month financing. That's right, only $9.54 a month. Stop by any Western States cat store to get your genuine cat skid steer at this price. As I mentioned, so many people, organizations, and businesses are stepping up to help fight the virus and those affected by it. Governor Little is my guest today. And Governor, what do you think of the way Idahoans are rallying to help each other in a time of need? It never ceases to amaze me. Every time we have a crisis, uh, a fire, a flood, uh, whatever it is, uh, Idahoans are very famous for uh, their philanthropic and just being good neighbors. And uh, and of course, the industry, uh, there's, there's just a lot of activity taking place in industry. Um, people that are stepping up and volunteering to coordinate it, uh, the making of face shields, which uh, we should be pretty good on face shields, given uh, the just the companies that I know uh, in the ditch of Mountain Home. Uh, a lot of companies are making face shields. N95 masks, uh, you just can't make those. Mm -hmm. Now, the new cotton masks that people are being uh, recommended uh, in my church, the one that I have on my desk was made by uh, some of the members of, of our parish that uh, did that for me. So, but you know, helping their neighbors, uh, you know, buying groceries for people that really need to stay in. There's just no shortage of it. Uh, businesses are volunteering and stepping up all over the state. And I'm very proud of Idaho, but I'm also not that surprised. Yeah, one example is Bucks Bags that I mentioned. The Boise company, known for more than 40 years for making custom sporting goods, pivoted to making protective masks, gowns, and for healthcare workers, and, and they did it voluntarily. Is that what you're hearing from a lot of these companies calling your office and saying, hey, we want to help? 
uh, and a lot of them are just doing it. You know, they're reaching out to their hospital. They're reaching out to the assisted living centers, the nursing homes, saying, what can we do to help? Uh, that's a very, very susceptible population. Uh, the healthcare workers there, you know, we we always recognize our first responders, our our fire, our police, uh, but the healthcare workers are also first responders, and it is very rewarding to see uh, the deep appreciation and support that our healthcare workers are getting. Um, I want to talk about something you did a, a while ago, and that was uh, hand out sandwiches to uh, truckers um, at the truck stop the other day. Why did you find that so important that you wanted to do that? Well, our system in our logistics system, uh, you know, Idaho is a pretty remote state, and it's very important that, uh, that we keep the truckers going and we keep them healthy. Uh, one of the issues is restaurants have closed down. And, and in some states, they've closed down the rest stops. And uh, for commerce to work, uh, those people have to eat. And, and I know it's evolving and some of the truck stops are doing a really good grab and go uh, uh, servings and, and particularly uh, rest areas. Uh, we're trying to work with all the states to make sure uh, that they work, but our, our system would collapse if we didn't have that commerce that the uh, the the men and women that work in the trucking industry support. Governor, we just have about 30 seconds left. Do you have a final thought you'd like to leave the viewers with this morning? Well, it's Easter week and, uh, you know, the lesson that we learn uh, this week that we talk about, uh, about love thy neighbor is incredibly important. We will get through this. Uh, and it's springtime and uh, we will get through this. Uh, but reach out to those that need some help and some support. Uh, I worry about people that are isolated at home. I look out on the streets of Boise and see how few people are out, and that's good. Uh, but, but they do need to get out and, and refresh their mind. It shouldn't be uh, coronavirus all day, every day. Uh, we will get through this. I am 100% confident, and I think we'll get through it better than almost any other place but people have to continue uh, to practice good behavior they're practicing today, and I appreciate it very much. Governor, I wanna thank you for your time today and say uh, happy Easter to you and your family and, and be well, sir. Thanks, Doug. And that's all of our time for this week's Viewpoint.